Yeah, yeah. Good afternoon, uh, everyone on this platform. We are very few today, and this is a, a bit disappointing. Uh, but I want to hope that some more people will join uh, us as we go ahead. Okay, I've seen two joining, and I believe that more will join. Um, good afternoon, and you are once again welcome to a bi-weekly presentation on the platform of Center of Excellence in Migration and Global Studies of the National Open University of Nigeria. On behalf of the Vice Chancellor of this university, Professor Olufemi Peters, I welcome you to this uh, educative platform. Every fortnight, we come with different topics, different issues to share with you as a form of our academic exercise. And this has been since the inception of this um, uh, center, which was uh, established uh, over two years now, over two years ago by Tech Fund Seed Fund. And this was actually put, uh, 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 put to start by the former vice chancellor of this university, Professor Abdallah Uba Adamu, who I'm also expecting to join us later. And uh, the current vice chancellor, Professor Lufemi Peters, has been guiding this platform jealously. He's been doing his best to make sure that the platform keeps thriving. And we are very open to all, everybody all over the world who want to present on our platform. Since it's a virtual presentation, you have your way. Just contact us and we set the ball rolling. And then um, at this uh, center, not only to present seminar, of course, we have a journal that we have started uh, publishing uh, since um, 2021. And each year we have two issues. 2021, we had volume one, issues one and two. And 2022, we had a volume one in April and the volume, um, volume one in April, volume one, issue, uh, volume two, sorry, issue one in April. And we're going to have volume two, issue two in November, which is around the corner. So you'll be getting all our publications, all our interesting scholarly articles published on, on that, uh, in that journal. And we always try to uh, make sure that we put in the papers that are peer reviewed and very scholarly too. And um, our mandates are, as I always say, to provide leverage for field based and solution driven research, to serve as agents of national and global policy in migration studies, to seek grants for academic activities and outreach to organize short courses, seminars, conferences, and public lectures, to publish and sustain peer-reviewed academic journal, which I've also mentioned, and of course, to seek and execute, and execute all memoranda of understanding with partners. So we are very much on this uh, mandate uh, given to us, trying to achieve them. And uh, we believe that as uh, months unfold and years unfold, we meet all our mandates as specified and as listed, as I have read out to us. Today is yet another exciting presentation, like I said, and we have a, a young scholar here with us who is a vibrant uh, scholar by name, Dr. Chris Agmohese, who holds a Bachelor of Science degree. Uh, of course, he made a second class upper in computer science from Adekunle Adashi University, Akuba. Uh, that's in Ondo State, if I'm not mistaken, and has a master's of science in computer and a PhD in information system, which is from Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife. So his PhD is from Ileife and his first degree um, is from uh, Adekunle Adashi. University of Kumba. He's currently a lecturer in the Department of Computer Science and Mathematics, Mountain Top University, Ibafo, Nigeria, and the Deputy Director, Open and Distance Learning Center, Mountain Top University. 
His research areas include artificial intelligence, health informatics, information security, and internet of things. And so uh, we are in the computer era and our scholar today is a guru in computer. And today he's going to be talking to us about DAPA, the causes and effects of the migration of information technology professionals on the development of information technology ideas in Nigeria, the present and the future. And I think it's uh, been a new, uh, well, relatively new area of, uh, of uh, uh, science. This DAPA is the infinite now. So we are very happy to have uh, somebody here today to take us through and uh, enlighten us more on this. So over to you, Dr. Uh, Chris Agmohese. And you have been given, you are Thank now you. able to share your screen. So you can go ahead, share your screen, and let us start now. Thank you. Good morning. Say good morning now. Good afternoon, everyone. I just want to, first of all, and quickly appreciate the leadership of uh, the Center for Excellence, National University, for this great opportunity to make a brief presentation on the topic we have on screen. When, it, when the opportunity was first presented, I was trying to, to crack my head. What exactly is this intersection between computing and uh, this migration as a topic? But later I realized that there is actually no boundary between, between the two. When you talk about com computing, there is a direct implication of migration in it. So quickly, we'll look at the topic, Jack by the causes and effects of the migration of information technology professionals on the development of information technology ideas in Nigeria. Look at the present and the future. So I've prepared the PowerPoint in such a way that uh, even if you have network interference, you will still be able to see the things that we are talking about here. Most of the things I will be saying, I've written them here. So we will just follow sequentially. Firstly, we'll be looking at the concept of migration and look at the subject, the slang, Jackba. Then we'll look at information technology professionals in the Nigeria information technology sector. Now, then we'll look at the causes of migration of IT professionals. Then we'll revisit migration again before we look at the implication in the Nigerian IT sector. Now, in a simple term, we can describe migration as the movement of a person or people from one country, region, or place of residence to another. Now, we're using this simple definition because I know that we have several uh, professors of migration in this platform now, several people that are very, very knowledgeable in this area. I would just want to cut away the technicality and the, some other professional technologies that are inherent here. So I'll just use the part that relates to what I want to present today. First and foremost, migration is a normal human activity. And from the, from the beginning, humans have always moved from one country, locality, or place of residence to another. What then is Japa? Japa is a Nigerian argot or slang, a slang word derived from the Yoruba language that simply means, that simply means to flee a dangerous situation as quickly as possible. So Japa is derived from the Yoruba word, which is made up of ja and ba. So it means to run and to make something appear larger, better, worse, or more important than it really is or needed to be. So the thing, taking, the thing has taken its root in the desire of young Nigerians to leave the country permanently. So we underline the word permanently. Now, before we proceed, we want to look at the subject information technology professionals. When I say information technology professionals, who are the category of people that I'm referring to? Who are information technology professionals? So information technology professionals in this context, they are the professionals that study, design, develop, implement, support, 
and manage computer-based information system, which includes the software applications and the computer hardware. We have varieties of uh, information technology professionals. We have the software developer. Of course, we must have been hearing about programmer, coder, um, whatever name that has to do with software application. These are the people that are concerned with the, the development of software application and the maintenance of such system as well as the deployment. Then we have another category that are within the, the computer network domain. They are known as the computer network architects. These are the people that design the, 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 the system to be deployed for computer network to connect group of computers together. And they are also serve with the responsibility of managing network related issues. We also have the computer support specialists. These are the professionals that will help us solve computer related problems, such as your desktop, your laptop, and other handheld devices. Okay, then we have the IT project managers. As the name implies, they are the ones that will manage information technology projects from the beginning to the end. They are most they are less concerned about the technicality, but the managerial perspective of the project. Now we also have the web developer. These are the software developer whose specialty lies within the, the ambit of web browser. So they develop software applications that can only run on web browser, not standalone applications. So we also have the information security analyst. Today we talk about cyber security. So information security expert, they are concerned with security of information, which goes across the network in which the information is being communicated. And we also have the computer system analysts. These are analysts that work with the software developer or programmer to examine existing system or the existing computerized system or manual system to understand the user's needs and take requirements or elicit requirements for the development of a desired software product. Then lastly, we have the database administrator and architect. These are professionals that are just concerned with the back end of software application. They are, their, their, their responsibility is to manage the database, the database and the data stored in the database. So having looked at the information technology professionals, we want to take a look at the Nigerian IT sector. While we are talking about how it is now, we still make some references to the to a few years back. So the information and communication technology sector. Now, when we use the word information and communication technology here, and previously we have used information technology, we I mean the two of them are used interchangeably in the context of this presentation. So information and communication technology sector, also known as the tech sector, is one of the Nigerian's largest growing sectors. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic, the sector contributed 15% of the country's GDP in 2020, only second to agriculture, which was occupying the number one position. This continued a five-year trend with the sector expanding at an 18% annual rate between 2016 and 2019. With the 90 Tech up and the large and expanding customer base. Nigeria is now the largest tech market on the Africa continent. More than 200 million people, or 72% of the population, now have access to mobile phone, and internet penetration is expected to increase from 2% since the introduction of mobile devices in 2001 to 65.3% by the year 2025. The biggest tech companies in the world, such as IBM, Microsoft, Cisco, Google, all of them have presence in Nigeria. Even Twitter, which was once blocked in the, in the nation, understand how crucial the market is that they have to negotiate to see how they come back to business in the Nigerian market. Japan Man, on their own, predicted that the industry will boost the economy by $88 billion by the year 2027. Regrettably, 
the growing number of young people in Nigeria did not find job as a result of this growth that has been experienced in the IT sector. There were only 497,000 people employed in the sector in 2017, or 1% of the total workforce. This was brought on by the youth population lack of digital literacy, which left them feeling unprepared for the workforce at that time. Despite the fact that this is a cornerstone of the nation's new national digital economic policy and strategy for 2020, 2020 to 2030, the Nigeria ranked 122 out of the 140 nations in the Global Competitiveness Report for the Development of Digital Skill. Although the Nigeria economy requires more advanced digital skill, the infrastructure for tech training was not sufficiently designed to deliver them. Most people who intended to gain training, to, to gain knowledge and undergo training, resulted to going to roadside shops to learn their IT skills. Despite the vast need for more qualified tech professionals within Nigeria, many instead seek to find opportunities abroad, hence the context of the JAPA. I want to look at the major causes for the migration of information technology professionals. I've understood the concept of JAPA migration and the categories of information technology professionals that we have. Here we have um, five major factors that are fueling the voluntary migration from Nigeria, which has never been seen since the World War II. These factors include the desire for a career, for a better career opportunity. So we live in a country where people, where people, even the, the few people that are employed do not find satisfaction in what they do. Everyone is seeking for better career opportunity. And with other challenges having effect with the first desire, everyone just feels that it is even better to leave the confines of the country. Another challenge here is the heightened insecurity in the country. This one is visible, permit me to use the word of a, a wild one that is visible to the blind and is audible to the deaf. For every day we wake up, we go out and we come back is what's given testimony in this country at this present era. The heightened insecu um, insecurity in the country is a major problem which has on daily basis be on, be, be, been considered worse. Let me use the word, it's, worse, it's getting worse as the day go by. The government is incapacitated and the security forces are out of ideas. Nobody knows what else to do. Right from the north, we have the bandits, we have the Boko Haram, we have the headsmen, and we have the jihadists there. But maybe to use the word, and right in the middle bed, we have the Niger Delta militant, we have the kidnappers there. In the southeast, we have the sectionists that are looking for their own country. And in the southwest, we have the ritualists. I, I do not mean that all of these, uh, all of these problems are uh, 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 restricted to a particular region, or they are just predominantly uh, exhibited in those areas. So all of these post-trade in the existence of the IT professionals in Nigeria. Another factor is the need to provide a better future for one's children. Then, fourthly, the requirements for future education and lastly, the poor governance in the country. All of these things we would not um, overemphasize, we still take a look at them later on. Now, it is uh, paradoxical to, it is paradoxical that the ship of the slave masters were filled with unwilling and forced migrants, brutally repressed and tortured to keep them on board. Yet some would rather drown than move away from their mother's land and the place they considered as home. A friend once told me that in, if the US and UK 
built a ship on the shore of Nigeria today and asked young people if they want to have to leave or migrate to either of the two countries. The number of people who we eventually get on board will sink the ship. Maybe I should say we we'll sink the ships because if they bring more than one ship, the two also will sink. We sink, sorry. The struggle, fights, and shoveling that will be seen would make WrestleMania look like a chat play. As sad as this assumption is, statistics back its fundamental reality. Now, we want to take a look at immigration holistically. A recent research survey revealed that about 45% of Nigeria's adult, adult population plan to relocate to another country within five years. 45% Nigerian adult population relocating to other countries within the next within another five years. Of the 12 countries surveyed from Africa, the Middle East Europe and North America, Nigeria ranks highest among the people who deliberately want to relocate to some other countries. In another study, it was revealed that even seven in every 10 Nigerians plan to relocate if the opportunity presents itself. The recent wave of Nigerians relocating out of the country represents the largest, the largest movement of people out of the country since the end of the civil war over 50 years ago. So what is significant is the profile of these people who are relocating. They are probably the skilled youth, including doctors, nurses, IT engineers, university lecturers, and technicians. They also include young people who have completed their studies abroad and opted to stay back because our country has nothing significant to offer them with regard to job opportunities or even basic safety. Some of them have been educated in elite universities at home and abroad. This demographic is more de debilitating for our national development, developmental prospects. A certain disturbing pessimism that this place will not get better anytime soon pervades the attitude of many of these fleeing youths. They are leaving because the place we call home has degenerated into a hellhole of calamities, devoid of opportunities and hope. Now, what exactly is the implication of this in the IT sector? One I want to think, is it positive? Is it negative? Is there even any effect? It is not as though migration often leads to brain drain. Indeed, it can have a positive impact on both the migrants and the communities of origin and the destination. For example, in 2012, two Harvard Business School graduates from Nigeria founded, they co-founded Junior and the eco he command all and one of the first tech startup in the country. Every one of us know Junior now where we purchase item and then some other things that it keeps expanding as the day go by. Several diaspora returnees have founded companies employing thousands of people. For instance, the tech company founded by diaspora returnees includes the Iroko TV that we all know, the Flutter Wave, and the babo. Yet the growth of these migrants as driver for human capital and job creation is really, is really discussed in, in Nigeria. In Europe, Europe is one region that is well poised to benefit from Nigeria tech talent. From 2005, for example, to 2015, employment for tech professionals in the Euro grew by one third, and a further 10% growth is expected by the year 2025. The implication is that more people, or uh, much more people, will still go. The number of people available within the Euro to take off these roles continues to decline. The same thing with Nigeria. The training and education sector has not been able to keep up with the needs of employer. Again, the sector has seemed impervious to the effect of the pandemic 
and skill shortage continue to grow. Today, the tech industry is a shortage of occupation in 24 member states in the EU. Now, this is a map that is showing the shortage of uh, skilled tech, tech workers in the EU. You can imagine that the whole light blue region, you can imagine the amount of uh, tech professionals that are required in the whole of the light blue region, okay? So this is the only place that we can say that, okay, this place is saturated. But just look at the vast region that requires tech professional. If the whole of tech workers in Nigeria, even if you might not even be able to occupy the entire field of the whole space there. So this is another point that people will also not stop to talk about. Now, the net effect of all of these things, the shortage of IT professionals will result in very poor productivity in several key sectors of Nigeria, mm -hmm. such as health, finance, agriculture, education, and transportation. With the advent of computing, the introduction of computing and mobile devices in Nigeria in 2001, several businesses have moved from the manual based to computerized system. Health institutions have moved from paper based to computerized institution and computerized system. Financial institutions such as bank, they have moved from using teller for withdraw and uh, deposit to computerized solution. Agriculture too. Recently, we discovered that so many ways we can apply computing techniques or computational approach using artificial intelligence to enhance agricultural product. Transportation too. Now we have boats, we have Ubers, and we have all of these applications that are used to enhance transportation. In the educational sector, we have the system, the IT system that we use to process results, we used to conduct examination, we used for staff directory for finance and all of those things. These applications require IT professionals. By the time all the IT or most of the IT professionals have successfully leave the country, really successfully leave the country, what becomes of the masses? These applications store your data on a daily basis. You do bank transaction online. You buy things, you sell things online. All of these are being carried out using applications. And these applications require maintenance. This maintenance can only be carried out by IT professionals. What becomes the fate even of the people in Nigeria in terms of your services, in terms of the safety of your data, that is the security of the information that you have distributed across the internet and gets propagated on a daily basis. Now, from the academic domain, there will be few people to teach IT-related courses in higher institutions. This will overburden the very few with excess load and invariably decrease their productivity. You will agree with me that today, any university that wants to that want to kick off one of the courses that we will introduce at the first set will be computer science. People want to run computer science, people want to run cyber security, people want to run software engineering, and in some cases, information technology or artificial intelligence. Now, all of these things would not be, they will not, the courses will not be taught by spirit. And in recent time, the Nigeria educational system has witnessed an elongated strike that has never been since, since I was born. Now, before the strike was called off, large percentage of the academic staff have decided to jump back. Now you go to universities, there are no sufficient, and there's no sufficient time to teach these courses. The private universities that are starting up, they are running heter scatter looking for people to teach these courses. Computer science today has the largest population of student enrollment in Nigeria universities. Who will teach these people? 
who will train these people if everyone leaves? That is on one direction. The bank today, a friend told me, if you get to bank today and you just say you are an IT person with experience, you might just resume that day without submitting application or CV. Now everybody is in short of tech professionals. It will get to a time where maybe the organizations will revert to the use of paper and barrel because if these security challenges and other problems continues in Nigeria, it might just be a breeding ground for IT professionals for the European countries to enjoy. One thing that would surprise that surprised me is that most of the people that are tra traveling or the people of you that are jack buying today, they obtain their training from public institutions in Nigeria, funded by the Nigeria government. At the end of the day, they will move to the Europe and the European people enjoy the benefits of their training. So with this, I would just want to draw a conclusion today that there is rising need for skilled information technology for the tech professionals across the globe, especially in Europe and in the United States of America. The current wave of JAPA of even the few tech professionals, both in academia and industry, will invariably and adversely affect the Nigeria, Nigeria sorry, affect Nigeria in many ways and impede the growth of the Nigeria tech industry. So thank you for listening. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for that uh, wonderful presentation. And uh, you really made it even less than 30 minutes. That was fine because uh, we want to discuss this uh, paper well, and uh, we also want to finish in good time. Thank you. So please, you can kindly stop sharing okay. so that we can see hands up and yeah, thanks so much. Uh, that was wonderful. And um, I can see the Japa, I can understand it better now. Thank you for that uh, enlightenment. Now the floor, the virtual space is open. We have heard uh, the approach Dr. Agbon Hesse has used for his presentation. And he told us about this uh, Japa, and in fact, he defined it as he believes Yorubas have uh, defined it to him because I know he's not a Yoruba man. <laughs> so he must have found that, done some research about Japa, and that is why he's here to talk to us about it. One part that really I find disturbing as others is that we have shortage of IT personnel. Of course, we are trying to have enough or more IT personnel, uh, personnel. And the little we have are uh, also leaving the country. And uh, maybe we'll go back to our analog and the time they all finish escaping. I can see that the first person with his hand up is Professor Abdallah Uba Adamu. And I'll say over to you, sir, for your contribution. First of all, I would like to thank the presenter for such a very stimulating uh, conversation. Very, very nice, very interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm fascinated by your conception of Japa, you know, the word for running away. And even though you're not a Yoruba, at least you could have looked at other uh, uses of the same, same concept. Like in Hausa, there is a concept like that called Archewa. Na Arche, that is, I have run away, I have escaped. Uh, from a particular situation. So it's not a, a uniquely to Yoruba. I mean, it, it's just other languages. I'm, I'm sure uh, the old man, you know, who is a, an expert on dead white Greek people uh, will, will be able to also come up with something in Uhuru. So that being said, I would have loved to see the difference, a clear difference between Japa and brain drain. You, you, you reference brain drain somewhere. But I would have loved to see a clear, clearly articulated difference between being a Japa and, and, and brain drain, or is Japa a new urban coinage for brain drain? Because when you talk about brain drain, you are actually restricting it to uh, intellectuals and other big people who run away or something like that. But 
Java seems to be like anybody who has a skill, just simply run away. So does that mean that people who are not academicians or who don't have a formal training in a particular skill and run away, are they not brain draining or are they japping? You know, uh, I think it is a very, very beautiful concept that you you, you need to, 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 to look at. Um, you, you gave employment figures about, you know, the metrics about information technology sector. And yet, you seem to have missed millions of people who are not formally trained and who cannot be captured by your metrics. Ordinary young boys and girls, like, like the Yahoo Yahoo boys. They are IT professionals, but they are not part of those metrics because those metrics that you, 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 you gave us were probably part of an official statistics that somebody generated somewhere uh, without telling us the methodology they use. We don't have to worry about all that. But the point I'm making is that whenever we are talking about uh, uh, IT professionals, we, we need to go beyond MSc, BSc, MSc, PhD, IT. We need to look at ordinary skills that people use in order to survive and using IT. My wife is an IT specialist because she uses WhatsApp effectively to trade. She uses uh, uh, Instagram effectively to trade. So, so long as you can make a living out of a particular skill that you acquire through information technology, you have both digital literacy and digital skills. And therefore you should be captured as part of those uh, metrics. Remove all our phones, smartphones now and see how we go back to dark ages of, of, of existence. So I, I think there's a need to, to generate further conversation about the informal IT sector and how people were able to acquire uh, these uh, digital skills and digital literacy and, and, and make a living without necessarily being overburdened with, with all these things. I have never studied IT professionally beside a diploma that I, I, I did, uh, but I was a director of management information system in, in, in Bayer University. And uh, I, I made a living out of computers. I mean, I, I sold computers, I assembled computers, I developed software, uh, particularly database software. I made a lot of money. And yet I have a beautiful YAC result in mathematics, F9, F9, that's what I had. I'm very proud of that F9 because it did not prevent me from achieving what I wanted to achieve in life. I did it. So I don't need mathematics to do that. I'm sure I will not be admitted into any Nigerian university now because I don't have a credit in mathematics at the time I took it, but I don't care because I have made it. So I, I, I think in terms, whenever we are discussing about migration, of IT professionals, we also need to look at those metrics that we're not being able to capture. Uh, and then finally, I would have also loved to see the receiving end. You have told us about the percentage of people who are migrating out of Nigeria with those skills or those skills who have a lot of skills. I would have loved to know what was the impact of Nigerians in IT fields in Europe, in the United States, because then that will really give a strong, solid basis to the argument that there is a migration of talent, particularly in IT. We know people are moving out with various skills and competencies. But we would like to know to what extent were they received over there and to what extent do they make a, a living out of there? Like the Indians. I mean, you know Indians have left uh, India and one of them is now running Microsoft. One of them is now running UK, which is an irony. I mean, India colonized them, and now he's back colonizing uh, uh, the country that colonized him, colonizing the, the, the country that gave him the language. He doesn't have the language, he has to acquire it, but now he's running the country. So the, the point I'm making is, how can we capture the metrics of the contributions Nigerian IT migrants made to the development of those communities where they moved into? How many Nigerians are in top-notch uh, uh, IT situations? Yes, we have talked about Jumia, about Iroko TV and all that, that's fine. These guys went there and they came back. What I'm talking about, what about those guys who migrated, lived there and made a significant contribution in IT uh, uh, field because of the, their migratory status? Thank you very much and uh, well done for, for such a stimulating talk. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Please, you will wait. Uh, Dr. Aboyesi, you give okay. you some time. Let everyone contribute. Then you now take the, your response together. So let's give the other people a chance to talk while you are noting their comments and their questions. Thank you. 
So I can see Professor Helen Kwanashe. Her hand is up. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much, uh, Director. And uh, thank you very much, Dr. Chris, for your well-presented talk. I have a comment or two. I noticed that the causes and effects of migration of IT professionals, like you um, elaborated to us, uh, is somewhat generic in the sense that those are the usual causes and effects we see with other professions. Um, I do not say that in criticism. I feel that indeed it is beneficial if every profession uh, determines and add to the body of knowledge we have so that at a point we can say, oh, this, this affects everybody and make it the truth. So that is not uh, a criticism on yes. the way that uh, you have presented. It just shows that what applies to medical doctors and uh, other professionals uh, is also applying to IT professionals. So my first question is to ask if there is any more specific causes or more specific effects that tend to apply mainly or only to IT professionals. That's the first thing. The second one is actually a comment. When I saw Japa and I saw that it is IT, I thought it's, it's another language like Java, you know? And so maybe I want to suggest when you're submitting the manuscript, you should put that word in quotes or in italics, just so that we know it's not um, an English word and it's not a professionally accepted word. But I like it. I like the fact that um, our Nigerian words and Pidgin English are finding their way into uh, English dictionaries and so on and so forth. And then uh, the third point I want to make is to respectfully disagree with uh, Professor Abdallah regarding uh, his submission that the Yahoo Yahoo boys should have been included in your professionals. Yes. Uh, we know that we define professionals as people who engage in a major activity for their source of livelihood. And whereas the Yahoo Yahoo boys do make a living from that, um, this is actually, uh, they're actually criminals. So it's like saying stealing is a profession and uh, which uh, in acceptable uh, uh, communities would not be the right. Uh, I, I believe that there's a word for it. I can't think of it outrightly, but I can describe them as criminals. So I respectfully submit that Yahoo Yahoo boys are not professionals and that your list was okay to exclude them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma, for your submission. And uh, I can also see Emeritus Professor Sogolu with his hand up. Over to you, sir. Yeah, um, thank you, Director. I don't know whether I'm really uh, qualified to comment on this uh, paper because if you, you're looking for uh, digital illiterates, I, I, I will be one of those very much available. I have no idea about uh, computer until very late. But I'm glad about this uh, lecture. But, well, before I commend uh, the presenter, I want to you know, take this opportunity to say that Professor uh, Abdallah Badamu, who laughed at me the other time when I said I failed accountancy, uh, you know, I didn't know that he too failed mathematics. So <laughs> hopefully, <I did. laughs> so in one one respect, I'm better than he is mathematically. He said he doesn't need mathematics. Well, we all need mathematics. If you pitch a cup of uh, Professor Damu, will tell you we add everything up very accurately. So you cannot say uh, he doesn't need mathematics. He does. So that's that's a. Uh, but I want to congratulate uh, uh, Dr. Chris Agbonka. The presentation is so clear, so lucid, and and this is the kind of uh, uh, presentation I really like to listen to. Uh, but you know, I, I I was just having the feeling that what he says about ICT experts who are migrating on their various uh, antics and so forth 
really applies to you know doctors, engineers, uh, space uh, uh, researchers, and aeronautic engineers, and so forth. Uh, those experts are, or many of them, are really very much needed in the developed countries. So they find ways in which uh, they they uh, migrate from uh, this country because the 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 what they do here does not really pay them very much. I cannot comment more than that, other than to congratulate the presenter uh, for a brilliant uh, uh, paper. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I think the person I saw his hand up again is uh, Dr. Emina William Uli. If you will still want to make your comments or contribution, over to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Chris, well done for your presentation, even though I've joined very late. Uh, I, when I looked at uh, the concepts used, uh, the, this Jaka movement of the team, or the Jaka syndrome that is all over the country, I, I, I get worried. Um, we may not see the implication now, but I'm sure in the nearest future, we'll begin to see how bad it has become, you know, because uh, if the state doesn't take up responsibility now to save the future, you know, I'm happy your presentation also tries to address the future. There is so much gap that is coming. Uh, but I'm worried in the sense that, uh, remember before now, technology, you know, it's one aspect of development that, you know, we are craving for. And all of a sudden, Development and technology that is supposed to be the north south direction is now south uh, south north direction. So I'm worried about that. I don't know how you try to strike a balance between seeing technology going back to the motherland. You know, I, I, in my own view, you know, I see technology now going back. You know, we've always seen we learn this thing theoretically, we want to learn something, and we've, we've gotten the theory even in the application. Now we are exporting that knowledge. I mean, isn't that, is there a balance? How do we strike this balance? Because we don't have the, the hardware to say this is our own homegrown technology. How do, you, how, do you, how do you strike a balance in that direction? You know, so I'm worried about that because it's not our own homegrown. Now we're exporting the knowledge. Well, how, how do we domesticate this kind of knowledge now? Thank you. Thank you very much for that contribution. I think for now, we allow Dr. Chris Agonhese to respond to the four comments slash questions raised. And maybe after that, if we have more hands up, we now continue with the question time. So over to you, Dr. Chris. Thank you so much for your comments and then the questions. I will try to answer them as clear. The first one was a comment in terms of um, Japa in many languages. I've noted that, um, but we, the one we hear of is Japa. I don't know the one in the, in the outside language. Probably they don't use it when they are going. This is the one that they use here. I'm not a Yoruba person, but I know that even the Igbo people now use Japa. Everybody in the Southwest, they are using Japa, Japa. Even people that don't know the meaning, they know that. Even if you don't understand anything, anything else in that language, but know that when they are living and they are living in the hurry, it is Jagba. So that is what I have to say about that. So the second one is Jagba and Brain Drain. Now, Brain Drain has been the, the English word that has been used from time immemorial. Like we mentioned at the beginning, migration did not start now. It has been from the time of creation. But I want to apologize to those that are not Christians. I want to use the biblical context. Sorry. There was a time that God told the children of Israel, go and tell Pharaoh this message, that you people should leave. I will take you to a land flowing with milk and honey. And Pharaoh was, re being, he, he, he was resistant. At the end of the day, he had to let them go. They left. They trekked. They didn't take horses, they didn't take chariots, they just trekked and they were going according to God's command. The same thing that God told Abraham, go take your wife Sarah and go to a place. But there was also a time in the Bible when God told Lot, flee. He did not use the word go, he said flee. So the, that two contexts differentiate Jaguar from brain drain. Brain drain could just be 
that okay, these people have been migrating, but the 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 way they go and the number of people that are living also is the difference between the Jagba and Bridge. The Jagba is, I'll use the word switcher, is much faster. In this context of Jagba, they don't even some people don't even tell their neighbor, they don't tell their father, they don't tell their mother. So it contains both speed and secrecy. Brain drain, you still take time to arrange yourself, inform your organization, resign. But in the case of Jack Banner, people are not resigning. They get to their destination and send their SMS that they are no longer coming to work because they have left the country. So that is why I'm capturing this present wave of migration as Jack Banner instead of brain drain. Because like you also mentioned, some people that do not even have, they do not have any particular skill. They don't have any particular technical skill. They are not educated, but they have looked at the environment and realized that they do not have future here. They also fled, so they have run away. So that one can be <laughs> described as Jackman because there's no there's no knowledge that we are saying that they are moving from here to that side. They acquire their knowledge there and use it there. So there's no brain drain in that context. That is what I think exists in that uh, part. So this next one is the the causes of the migration of IT professional and the other professionals. Of course, other professionals. They are they have been migrating. It is of recent that we hear about IT professionals migrating. Before there was nothing like that. You just hear maybe once one in hundred, one in fifty. But people that have always been migrating from from time memorial were the professional health workers, the nurses, and the doctors. But right now, with the advent of computing technology everywhere across the world especially with the effect of the pandemic, when people cannot work from home. The doctors cannot even work, the nurses cannot work without IT professionals. The pandemic has created much more opportunities for IT professionals in outside the country than it used to be. So they, were, they probably were just thinking of managing the situation of the country because it is not even easy to migrate to another country. You think about your family, you think about the comfort you enjoy, think about the uncertainty in where you are going to. So, but all of these things that you, some of these problems that you said cause across other areas also contribute, also constitute the same reason for IT professionals. So we can also say that the same thing that push other people away is pushing IT professionals, but the, 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 it is faster for IT professionals because right now they are calling them to come even with just little or next to nothing skill. So that is the third one. Then the fourth one, Thank you. Thank you. The, the, the second, the second, third person that asked question, I made comment corrected that about the Yahoo boys being professionals. That is not actually. I don't want to stress that again. They are not professionals. They talked about people that did not acquire knowledge from institutions and they just carry their phone and press and they are professional because they know how to operate their phone. So those are not professionals. The IT. Let me start from the part of employment. The IT sector is a sector on its own. They, they have digital base that, that monitors all the people that are employed within the IT domain. So if what you are doing does not contribute and produce, provide service for people to utilize within Nigeria, you are not categorized as, a, as an employee in the IT domain. Then I come back to the other part where you talk about someone that is using phone or using anything without being without attending any formal educational institution. So if you are using your phone and you can use it very well to do many things, it does not make you an IT professional. You are only an end user that is knowledgeable in using IT technologies. IT professionals do not work on the surface. They work at the back end, providing this environment for you to be able to use your phone effectively. I don't know if you get my point now. So that is what they do there. The last person talked about uh, moving from the beginning. I didn't really get it clear. Moving from, okay, if, I, if, I, if I'm right, acquiring the, the knowledge here, taking, no, before you, I think Prof also, the first person asked if there is any impact of the people that are migrating from here to Europe, if they have contributed significantly to the economy there and then uh, what position they are holding there. Well, I don't have um, data about that, but I know that most of the people that I've contacted, that of course my colleagues that have left here, they are not even after holding any top position for you to hear what they are doing. They don't even care. They don't even want you to know what they are doing. All they just want to do is to be comfortable in life, earn their thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and live a comfortable life, providing the future that is 
that is that is hopeful for their children. That is what they care about. But as time progresses, they will also get to the the point where you begin to hear of them here. But it won't be as easy as if they were right here at home. So that is for that. Then the last one that um, uh, Nina Williams asked, Nina Williams, there, there is a little or next to nothing that you can do as an IT professional because you might just be surprised that me that I'm giving this seminar today, tomorrow, you call my number, it's not going to give. <laughs> I'm off the radar too. <laughs> so the people that are living, they are not living willingly. They are living because it has gotten to a point where they can no longer take it. It is not that they just want to leave. They, they want to contribute to the country, but what if they die tomorrow? What if the country kills them? Some people tell you that Nigeria has attempted to kill them times without number, therefore they will not stay again. Some have gone abroad to study and they came here just to start business and that was the end of their lives. So that is why we use the concept of Japa. It's like flee from imminent danger. People believe that it cannot get better. It can only get worse. And if we have that mentality, mm. there's nothing you can do to stop people. They will go, no matter how hard you try. Increase their money. Increase their money to hundreds of millions. They will still leave. Because the only person that is alive that will be concerned about growth and development. So thank you. OK, thank you very much. Is uh, Professor Abdallah Sand still up, or is he former one? I'm very happy that we are having a discussion about all this. And uh, Professor Konashe and Chris both disagreed with my perception, which is OK. That's, that's why we're here, to agree to disagree. So let me ask you this. How do you classify your mechanic? This is a person who fixes your car, all right? Your car is, is, is spoiled. You don't take your car to the Department of Mechanical Engineering to be fixed because those people have BSc, MSc, PhD in engineering, mechanics, or whatever. You take it to a mechanic who has not even finished primary school, who could not articulate his uh, thoughts mm. effectively except through pidgin English, and this guy fixes it very well. Very. Is he a professional or a what? So we need to renegotiate the conception of what a professional is. That's an expert who knows what he's doing, not an expert who has been given a certificate and certified as being a professional. We, we have this. You ask any professor of, uh, of, 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 of mechanical engineering, does he fix his car? They don't. They, they go to a mechanic. They, they go somewhere and ask somebody to, to fix their, their, their cars for them. This is just an example. So the, the point I'm making is expertise, professionalism, I think that drive the economy. And if we begin to start a nitpicking about what constitutes an expert and what does not constitute an expert, we'll be excluding a whole bunch of people from contributing to the economy. If we say we will not accept anybody with digital skills and digital literacy as a professional in a particular field, then that's okay. We remain in darkness. We are waiting for those with MSc, BSc, PhD in Portran, in COBOL, in C++ to come and tell us how to operate a particular mechanism or how to do something. We have thousands of people now creating applications on YouTube, on, on, on Google Play and all that, thousands of them. These kids don't even have a high school. So by the time you begin to restrict them to non-professional status and category, you are excluding a very valuable contribution to the economy. Even Yahoo, Yahoo boys are criminals, I agree. And who says that people with BSc, MSc, PhD do not become criminals? I mean, look at them, all the people that EFCC people have been arrested. These guys are professional in various disciplines and they are criminals, they are being lo lo located up. So the, the point I'm making is, let's look at knowledge economy. Let's, let's dispense with all these things. When I was living in California at the University of California, Berkeley, Microsoft came to recruit people. And the first thing they said in the advertisement, don't come with a necktie. I mean, don't come with a corporate structure. You come with your T-shirt and whatever it is, what they want is your brain, not your, your qualification or, or something. What can you do? Bill Gates is not a professional. Check his history. The guy paled. He, he, he left uh, Harvard. He didn't even finish it. Samsung was Michael Dell. He didn't finish. He was a biologist. And yet by Dell computers now are, are used. So if we begin to say that for you to use Dell computers or for those, those people who must, must have BSc, MSc to be admitted into a group of professionals, we will not have Microsoft. We will not have uh, Dell Co Corporation. 
we will not have gateway. We will not have a whole bunch of things. So I, I think let's focus on knowledge economy rather than certificate economy. All right, sir. But it's good to disagree. Thank you very much, sir, for that uh, uh, contribution. And many hands are up. I'm sure they want to follow up on this conversation. Professor Panashi, <laughs> over to you, ma. Over to you, ma. Thank you very much, Director. And thank you very much, uh, Prof. I, I raised the issue initially, and I think it's not that I want to overflow the matter, but I, I believe that um, Dr. Professor Abdallah's uh, resubmission is a response. Uh, now, be that as it may, criminal activities are not included. You cannot say that stealing, banditry, kidnapping, prostitution are professions. <laughs> they are not. And we don't need to belabor the point. And the presenter has not said that you have to be a degree holder to qualify as a professional. The mechanic that Prof referred to, they are professionals. They are professionals. Yahoo Yahoo boys are not professionals. And people doing advertisement on Instagram or WhatsApp, they are not professional IT people. They just use IT too to manage or escalate their business. I don't think on a forum like this, we need to argue about that. If we use, we say something that is uh, pointed out that is not really apt, we should just accept it, let's move on. There is no way that stealing and, profession, and corruption and uh, banditry and kidnapping can be a profession. That's why the fact that they make money from it. This definition assumes that the people are doing legal activities. Yahoo Yahoo is not a profession and they don't add to our economy. They give us such a bad name that they diminish our economy, diminish our people, diminish our brains in and out of this country. That's my humble submission. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. I can see the, okay. Mr. Olusoji Ajao has his hand right. up. Over to you. Thank you, very, thank you very much, Ma. Uh, I, thank you for having a funny presentation from the start. And uh, my very self, I've been involved in digital skill training for the past seven years. And that's why I, I connect with Dr. Uh, Abdallah, who mentioned that uh, he had a fail in mathematics. Myself, when I enter UI, I enter UI with pass in mathematics. And I want to submit, and I want to connect with uh, what Professor said. I agree with him totally. A professional doesn't need to get a degree. Facebook we are using today drop out from Harvard. The same thing for Bill Gates. The same thing for Steve Jobs that created the iPhone. And again, somebody, the last speaker mentioned that if you're on Instagram, uh, you are using it for your business, you are not professional. I beg to disagree with you. I have certification in Facebook digital marketing, social marketing. Those kids you are watching on television and this guy, they go behind the scene. He's a professional. And as a matter of fact, let me tell you, man, Facebook now have certified Facebook marketer. And as I speak to you now, in the US, and professor that spoke, he spoke, he, he lived in US. What they do in US is that if you are a Facebook certified marketer, if you are entering university, they have a credit conversion. They put in your, your credit. So credit load will be reduced because you are Facebook certified. So somebody working on TikTok or Instagram, they are professionals as well. We call them professional marketers, influencers. That's their profession. And that's why Facebook have to create a certificate for that. Even we have what we call uh, Google's, Google, Google Certified Marketer. And let me give it back again. When Donald Trump won American election, he worked with professional Facebook marketers. That's what he did. So again, we could not just, and I, I want to submit again, my first degree in UI was adult education. And in adult education, we define qualification in different ramifications. So you can become a professional without power to formal education. So it can be certified. You don't need to become uh, a, a, a university degree, uh, former educational system. You can be certified. And as I speak to you now, that is what the IT industry are looking at. Certification without going to university. That's what they are doing. And what they are doing now, what is trying is that certification with credit transfer to your university degree. So we should be able to classify. I think the, the presenter again, maybe next time. Now, I agree that Yahoo is not a profession. Look at the chartered accountant who embezzled federal government money. Look at chartered accountant of Nigeria, the, uh, the former uh, accountant general of Nigeria embezzled. He's a professional accountant. 
but he used his professional qualification to embezzle money. So you can see somebody who study IT, professional IT, and going to Yahoo. That's what professor is telling you. You can become an IT mm -hmm. professional and use your skill in a criminal way. Look at a medical doctor that, that, uh, that uh, carry out abortion for ladies. That's it. Or a doctor that's involved in human trafficking. So it doesn't mean you can be a professional at the same time, use it in a, in a criminal way. So that the difference that there is a formal qualification into ICT and informal. As I speak to you again, I want to rest my case. The what professor mentioned is very valid. Big Gates is never a graduate in Microsoft. Facebook left university. Uh, Steve Jobs of iPhone today, the number one iPhone telephone uh, gold standard for telephone, never a graduate. So should we call them non-professionals? Because they never had a degree. But they, uh, this guy that did Facebook learned coding from uh, 13 years. He gave us Facebook as 19. So this is non-formal education. I rest my case. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let me I will call the last person with the hand up. But before I call him, I want to quickly make a point of correction here. I did not hear degree makes you an IT professional. I didn't hear that in that presentation. Neither will I also say you need a degree to be called a professional. Because I am a nurse. And when I read nursing, I did not have a BSc in nursing, and yet I was a professional nurse. So maybe when the presenter is going to respond, he will tell us what he said exactly so that we don't keep twisting what he did not say. Thank you so much. Director. Dr. Emina, over to you. Okay. Hello, Thank Director. You. He Thank didn't mention much. a degree. Uh, he did not. Yeah. He did not, but he implied that to be a professional, you have to be in a particular guild that there is a database of professionals that agrees, acknowledge, yes, certify yes, you yes, as a professional. He didn't say BSc, MSc, PhD, but he implied it, that for you to be a professional, you have to follow a particular process and get a particular recognition because there is a database of those professionals. That's why he yes, has a, that is all true. those figures of, of metrics. Yes. He has these figures of 45% uh, who are these. He, he didn't, if he was to remove those figures, he will include everybody, but he only restricted himself to officially I, accepted definition of a professional. Can I respond to that, Mark? Yeah. Yes, sir, you have answered the question, sir. Officially yes. accepted definition, and he must have a database, and he must belong to those group of professionals, and he must be accepted into their community. Otherwise, you'll be seen as a quack, quackery, or you'll be seen as a non-professional. That is my own take now. But let me allow okay. Dr. Mina to talk so that the presenter will now round it up. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I, I, Dr. Mina, I think uh, yeah, Chris, Dr. Chris needed to have actually con conceptualized uh, his, his, uh, the context of professionalism that he meant you know, in this context. If he had done that, maybe we won't be going into all of these uh, arguments. So in the, in the paper, maybe you should narrow it down to what you, in your own context, what you mean, because you have a right to say, this is what I mean by the professionals or those that I'm referring to in this context, particularly in this presentation or in the paper. And then, um, Professor Helen Ma, uh, you, you say the prostitution is not a, is a, is not a professional, it's a professional, Ma. They, they've even given it a new name now. They call themselves sex workers, professional sex workers. So, so it's a profession, Ma. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Badamu, you see what you have got yourself Thank into? You. Thank you <laughs> so much. Thank you. <laughs> so we are going That's to why I kept allow my mouth, Dr. I kept my mouth quiet so that uh, nobody will expose me. But Professor Badamu would have exposed me that I don't know anything about uh, uh, I, I see it. That's why I kept my mouth quiet. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, but it's interesting. That is the essence really? of this uh, presentation for us yes. to really, it is. Uh, it is. you know, address issues in this manner. And I'm enjoying every bit of it. Very nice. But I'll hand over to Dr. Chris Agbon Hesse. Chris, thank so you now, very much for looking your at paper. Everything. Okay. That means your topic is juicy. That means your presentation <laughs> is good. That is why we are all exercising ourselves. Okay. <laughs> so, much. so let's thank hear you. what you have to say to wrap it up. All right, thank you, Doug, for your 
contribution. Everyone that has contributed and criticized every aspect of the presentation. But if you remember, in slide five, I defined information technology professional. In slide five, I defined it. And I said, information technology professional, they are the people that study, design, develop, implement, support, and manage computer-based information system, which include both software and hardware. That was the, the definition I gave for this course. And I said, mm -hmm. under that, we have different categories of professional that are known as professional. We have the software developer, a computer network architect, computer support specialist, IT support manager, web developer, and a whole lot of them there. I mentioned all of those things. Now, I want to remind you that in this country and anywhere, if you say you're a professional, you must be affiliated with a professional body. If you say those people that are doing all of those things, getting those certificates, they are professional, then we ask you, which professional body are you affiliated to? Now, I might know how to give injection. I, have, I see somebody that is having, that is suffering from malaria. I know based on experience, this person has malaria. I know that, okay, if I look at the best inputs from experience that I have with nurses, if you divide it into four equal parts, divide the rightmost stop into four parts again, you can insert the syringe there and put the injection there and you remove it, you use your cotton wood to clean it. And the person gets healed. I keep doing that. I'm treating people for malaria. That doesn't satisfy me as a professional. It doesn't. I think the government should see me. They will arrest me and jail me for maybe for a lifetime. <laughs> Even though I'm doing what is good. So we have people that are, and you know, IT is also a virgin field. It's just growing. And it is evolving as time progresses. A lot of areas are coming up. A lot of areas are coming up. There are some certificates that you see tomorrow, certification that are not available today. And as the business need is expanding, you begin to see new things. But the professionals that have defined in the context of this presentation, there are these eight key categories of people that have listed here. These are the people that are in the core IT domain, not the end users. You say because you know how to use phone to use one, or you are using one application to transmit, or you are using it for marketing. You might just be a certified so and so person that is doing business using the platform of information technology. But the professionals that have categorized here, they go. They go beyond that level. These are the people that are involved in the in the core IT task. You get it now. So there are still some people that will go and learn coding. I did not even say that this people must go through university. And in the presentation, I also mentioned that they, when there was no study material available at the point in time, these people that are eager to to be IT professionals went to roadside um, tech, um, roadside business center to learn their skills. If at the end of the day they have acquired sufficient skills and they will go and meet professional body, they want to affiliate the a particular professional body, they will go for either interview or write exam to be certified as a member of that profession. Until that, no matter what you know, you cannot be regarded as an IT professional. So I think I would just uh, want to stop there. Thank you so much. Who is raising up hand here? Muhammadu. Okay, let's hear from you quickly. We are going to round off very soon, the next five minutes. Good afternoon, all. So, um, I want to the uh, presenter to differentiate what between hackers and crackers so that the matter will be okay. If you can differentiate hackers and crackers, hackers and crackers, yes. Yeah. They're just yeah, like they're people. breaking. There are people you can hack us, we can have the good parts, which are the white hats, and we have the bad parts, which are regarded as the black hats. All these are people that work within the security domain or the cyberspace of information technology. When you talk about hackers, you can hack into a system for good intention, you can hack into a system for bad intention. So I do not know the category that you are referring to. If there is a, a plot somewhere to 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 cause an explosion somewhere in Lagos State. And I, as an IT person, I've gotten an intel about that. And I have knowledge in hacking. I can hack into that system to see what exactly their plan is so that I can provide the countermeasure. That is my good intention of hacking into that system. But like Prof mentioned earlier, we have people that can use such um, penetration for bad intention, which are those Yahoo guys you are seeing. If they have access to hack into Remita, for instance, or CBN uh, sites, they will just have to transfer money from there to Switzerland. You understand? So when you are hacking into a system, you are entering, you are giving, you are entering into a, somebody's system without authorization. 
because you understand the code that implements the uh, information protection policy. So you enter into the system, you do whatever you want to do into that person's system without the knowledge of the person, even though they might get to know later on. So you can do that for the good intention or good that for the bad intention. When you're talking about cracker, where well, that terminology does not really depict what you, you I don't know if you what you want, you tend to say. There are people that, be, that will be able to intercept encrypted information during communication, of um, that information between the sender and the receiver, you can intercept that information and try to apply some techniques to know what exactly that information contains. You can apply brute force techniques or some other authority to decrypt the information to know what exactly these people are saying. For instance, you are placing the call across to somebody, you are calling the person and somebody is monitoring your call and knowing what exactly you are telling that person and what the person is telling you without those people knowing what exactly is going on that they are being monitored. You get it now. Even though the conversation is encrypted at the communication channel, but you have been able to crack that information and guess the meaning, the meaning of that information that is going on between the two parties. I don't know if that answers your question, sir. But, but we can call it who boys as uh, professionals, but they are crackers. Yes, from what I have described, you are the one that will call them professionals. Do you get it now? We can call these people cyber criminals also. Do you get it now? Until they are affiliated with professional body, they cannot be regarded as professional in the definition of terms in the IT domain. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much uh, for making that clearer to the last speaker. And uh, at this juncture, I want us to call it a day, but without uh, much ado, I want to thank the presenter for a job well done. He thank really you. did well and uh, I really appreciate your effort. And uh, since the time I kept calling him to come and present here, he has always been assuring me, no problem, no problem until he has done it well today. We thank you very much, Dr. Chris, and we hope that uh, we have uh, more conversations and uh, whenever we need you to come in and enlighten us more about IT, I hope you will always uh, grant us the, the, <laughs> the audience, you know, whenever we ask you for it. And I want to thank all the, my senior colleagues here today who have uh, contributed to this uh, presentation and to make it interesting. At least I really thank uh, Professor Abdallah for raising some issues that stimulated everybody to talk. And that's it, we want to talk here, we want to add and delete. I thank uh, Professor Helen Konashe. I thank Professor Emeritus Sogolo, even when he said he didn't talk, but at least he said something that made us all laugh. I thank Dr. Mina, I thank Mr. Jao, and even those who didn't talk, but are on this platform, we appreciate your presence. And uh, we say in two weeks time, we have another presentation that will be very stimulating. And we are expecting to find this number of people times three on this platform. So you will help us to tell it to others that there's a platform where we exchange ideas and uh, we get educated. Thank you very much. And I want to call it a day.